Today on the show, I am curious to take a look at a very serious topic when it comes to photography, and that's ethics. Y'all stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus... Membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. What's happening, everybody? I'm Ant Pruitt, and welcome to the show, Hands On Photography. Today, I want to get into a pretty touchy subject um, when it comes to the world of photography, and that's ethics. You know, we've spoken about uh, privacy here on the show several times. We've spoken about, um, you know, uh, the fact that you do have rights as a photographer and, and where everything stands with your images and when you can take photos, so on and so forth, even all the way back to when I had Mr. Henry, uh, Harry Williams on the show and he d- did his street photography and was pretty up close and personal with people and he posts those images and so forth. And, you know, some people uh, have issues with that type of photography and some people don't. And I wanted to dive into the ethics a little bit more because I saw an article over on petapixel.com that I'll get into here momentarily. And it just sort of just just struck a chord with me again. And I said, let's let's talk about this on the show and, and let's get some feedback from you, the hands on photography listener. and Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, but anyway, let's let's just take a, 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 a couple different points of view regarding photography and ethics. So. All right. I'm a photographer. I'm out and about just, you know, on my leisure and in the mood to shoot some street photography. You know, I'm heading heading to downtown Santa Rosa here in Northern California. And it's always an interesting place to shoot. Uh, So I'm out there with my camera and I see people going in and out of the shopping mall and going in and out of the restaurants and shops and what have you. And I, I, I see someone that has on some pretty vibrant clothes that says, wow, this is definitely uh, springtime shopping, you know, just because of the way the scene is, is squared away. Grab my camera, frame the shot, click the shirt, or boom, I got the shot. And then I see another family doing the same thing, but there's the child right there front and center in the shot. It's a beautiful shot. I decide not to shoot it. But that's me. That's my personal ethics. Why? Because I don't particularly want to take photographs out in public of children without having the consent of the parents. That's just just me. That's just my ethics. I'm not saying my ethics are right. I'm not saying my ethics are wrong, you know, but there is just some things like that that comes into consideration into the world of photography. Now, Back to the Petapixel story. Uh, This was written uh, not too long ago from Jaron Schneider. And uh, it says, is it ethical to edit a guest's pink hair out of your wedding photos? And the headline is quite catchy. Kudos for that. But it's actually spot on. It's not a bunch of clickbaity stuff. So good on you, Petapixel, for that. Uh, What happened in this story? I'm not going to tell you the whole story because I'd rather you go check it out on their website and give it a read. But the gist of it was um, a wedding photographer was working on some photographs and sent them over to the paying client and the paying client reaches out to them and says, you know what? There's something going on in this image that I don't particularly care for. And it's a person in there that had on something that just sort of stands out and it distracts from everything else, or they had pink hair and it distracts from everything else. And, you know, that is a legit question from someone that's paying thousands of dollars for a, a day in their lives that, you know, they're always remember, they're always cherish. And they didn't, they didn't want it quote unquote ruined for whatever reason. So uh, you're going to get stuff like that when you're doing wedding photography and the way the photographer handled it may um, upset some people or, or it may have folks saying, you know what, right on kudos to the photographer, go check it out. I'm not going to dig into it too much, but 
again, it's something that's worth considering. Even if you're just doing portraits of someone um, for like corporate headshots or what have you, uh, some ethics can be involved when it comes into when it comes to doing the retouching process. Uh, we've spoken about doing frequency separation here on the show several episodes back and frequency separation basically goes in and does a great job of smoothing out skin and blemishes, uh, um, blemishes on the skin of your model. Uh, you can do it quite tastefully. Or you can overdo it to where their skin almost looks like plastic and porcelain or what have you and not necessarily look realistic. In some instances, uh, there's a time when you want to go overboard and that may work for that scenario. In other instances, I can't say I recommend doing that. I recently did a photo shoot for um, the wonderful co-host here at Twit with uh, Mr. Michael Sargent and, and, and Jason Howell. And as I'm working on those images, I'm thinking in my head, I need these gentlemen to look like the fine gentlemen that I know that they are. I don't need my post processing to change uh, much of anything for them. I just want to enhance who they are for the images to be on the website. And, and, and I want them to look good and I want them to feel good about it. I didn't want to overdo it. But what if either of them had come to me? What if Jason had come to me and said, you know what? Mr. Pruitt, I just come back from vacation and I really, really have a tan and uh, I want you to just enhance that tan (laughs) that I just got back on vacation. Can you do that for me? You know, and and maybe I can at their request. But how far do I push that? You know, there's there's a there's a bit of a balance in there um, when dealing with your paying client customer, if you will, and you looking at this as your piece of art. Uh, What do you do now? Granted, that did not happen with Mr. Howell and I. Um, I didn't get any complaints on it. I am grateful to be able to shoot his photograph as well as Mr. Sargent's. Um, But again, that's the type of stuff that has to go through your head regarding post-processing, regarding ethics. Is your post-processing pushing it a bit too far and making things not what they seem, what they actually are? in the photograph. Um, You know, we've been talking a lot about AI. Well, some of us have been talking a lot about AI. I have it (laughs) about AI and what's been going on in in the world of photography with that. And there's a lot of ethical issues when it comes to what AI generated images do to us as a society, as we see them and, and share them out all over and get misinformation and all of that good stuff. But nobody really says that about quote unquote, photoshopping or uh, manipulating a photograph just inside of Lightroom or inside of Photoshop or whatever image editor that you are using. You can push these things a very, very long way and totally change the image if you're skilled enough. Uh, So again, think about the ethics and um, let me know what your thoughts are on this. Uh, I Again, read the article on Petapixel and uh, shoot me an email. Let me know your thoughts on the scenario, how you would have handled it. And again, I'm not going to sit here and say your answer is the wrong answer or the correct answer. This is just open for discussion. Okay. So shoot a message to hop at twit.tv or if you're a club twit member, send it out. Just put something there in the uh, hands-on photography channel in discord, because you know, that's where all the cool kids hang out. All right. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. And before we go, I actually wanted to touch on one more thing because I did bring up AI and I also wanted to bring up my man, Mr. Terry White. Uh, Adobe just announced some new updates to uh, Photoshop uh, at the time of this recording. Some pretty cool stuff in there regarding gradients and some adjustment layers. And it's just making things a lot faster using Adobe Sensei AI uh, to help you out in your creative process. But They also added some stuff uh, on the beta side of of Photoshop It's publicly available, but it's not in full production just yet. And it's using generative AI. I did not download it and install it. I don't care to. Uh, I've pretty much given up on playing around with beta products. It's just I'll just wait. So I didn't want to discuss it too much on the show um, because that's just me. (laughs) So go ahead and check it out. I'll put a link to his video showing, showing off everything here in the show notes and this just, uh, go give Mr. Terry white a good shout out. All right. Thanks again for all your support. Again, shoot those messages to me at hop at twit.tv. Again, that's old school email hop 
at twit.tv. Love to hear your thoughts on this matter. Please continue to share the show out with everybody and help grow this show and help us get more downloads of hands-on photography. Really does help me out. Appreciate all the support. And again, um, thank you to my man, Mr. Victor and Mr. Nielsen and all of our editors there to make me look and sound good each and every week. Hey, safely create it, dominate, and I shall see you next time. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space books and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time. 